everybody and welcome to another exciting video on living on gold. My name is Ken Riley. I'm from Copperland and we're going to teach you everything you need to go out and prospect and find enough gold to then build a new career on. Because a lot of people today are losing their jobs or they're just dropping out of the job market. Well, you need a new career like us. You get to a certain age, you want a new career. It's something that's really exciting. Prospecting, processing gold is exciting. So last week we covered the top level of the, this is our gold prospecting cart that we designed ourselves. And the top level, like we said, is for your milling process for your ore. You'll still need, if you're if you're digging up large chunks of ore, you need a jaw crusher to crush it down to about half inch to three quarter inch gravel, because that's all the bigger that you want to put into a mill this size. So about half inch is about right. When you drop your half inch gravel into this, this is a six inch mill, it'll pulverize it down to anywhere from a 50 grit sand down to 200 mesh powder, depending on the, the filter that you put in there, the little uh, grizzly you put in there, or the amount of time that you leave it on. So as we told you, this is a three-part process. You don't have to use the systems we're using. We're just going to show you how we're doing it and why. And the first thing, like Jeff always tells you, if you're taking out ore or you're digging in the dirt and there's no gold there, you're working for nothing. This card is designed, the whole strategy of the card is designed so that you can get on good gold and enough gold to live on. So the top section we showed you last week, we fired it up, and that was the the six inch mill. Now we're going to talk about mills. This is called an impact mill or a flail mill and it's designed to take your gravels and reduce those gravels to like I said a, a mesh, a sand mesh or 200 grit powder. It's really a powder. So you have in your impact or flail mills, you have two types. You have a chain type. It basically uses a little screw on link here. And this is what you attach to your rotating assembly in the mill. It attaches your chain. Of course, you cut it short enough to go inside there, or longer if you have a bigger mill. So this thing whips around and it's flailing away <laughs> like, like so. This, most people use a chain mill. We're not doing that. We're going into what we call a hammer mill. Now a hammer mill, instead of using a chain, uses rods or in this case it's flat bar. This is a one inch by quarter inch flat bar. We'll probably go to 3 sixteenths by 1 inch. Anyway, this attaches to the inside and as your, your shaft is moving around, it takes this hammer and it whips that hammer around and the hammer is actually cutting through and chopping your ore down. So we'll show you how we're building up the insides. We haven't showed you that yet. You basically have to have either a round or hexagonal tube. You weld on a back plate and a front plate. As you can see, we have two bearings. These are really inexpensive bearings. They're probably $15 for a pair of them. This is a 5 8 It's got a square base. I like the square base. And it's also got a bearing in there that 
it's conical, it rotates so you can line stuff up. In the back of this we have, on the bottom, this is the outlet. And in here you put your, your screen, your mesh, your grizzly, whatever, you know, whatever you're putting in there to determine what size material is coming out through the bottom. front you've got a removable plate that has your bearing on and then inside here if you look closely you can see this is where all your material is coming in we would have put it on the end but on a six inch mill it just isn't possible to put a big enough entrance on the end so we put it we put it on the side, and the important thing is that if you're putting on this, it on this side, make sure that your motor is spinning in this direction. This would be a clockwise direction as you're viewing it here. So it's pulling your material down and into the, the tube, your cylinder. If you went counterclockwise, it would hit that material and throw it up back in your face. We don't want that. So you can see it's just a, a tube, six inch tube with an inlet here. Your outlet is on the bottom. That's your removable plate. Now to the action part. This is what I built up this week out of parts. I took a, it was a three-quarter inch cold rolled steel you know, shaft and cut it down from three-quarter to five-eighths. That's what this is. I have shop tools, I use lathes, mills, things like that. And then I made a, a tube to go over it. This is five-eighths drilled interior and then it it's about five and a half inches long. And then I cut two more slightly larger tube sections to go over that piece. And I made up these discs. But I made those on the lathe in a drill press. And then I MIG welded all three of these round plates to these two sleeves and through the sleeve, the outer sleeve, the inner sleeve, and the shaft, I drilled two 3 16ths inch holes to pin it all together. That way if you want to take this apart, put something else on there, or repair it or change it, you can just drive these two pins out. Pin goes in there, one in there. You can drive those out, slip this off, put a new assembly on. You don't have to rebuild everything. So that's, you have three gangs of hammers going on in the system. These will go on basically like so. I've made it so you can put three hammers or in this case, I'm going to use double hammers, a hammer on this side, a hammer on this side, and then bolt them together. And as this is spinning around, these hammers will be hitting and cleaving all your gravel into real fine bits. Instead of a chain, the chain's got kind of a round end, and that Round end is really going to take a beating. You're going to have to replace this pretty often. It's a lot easier to run your hammers like this. You can actually put a weldable tip on it, and when the tip wears out, you just weld on another tip. So you don't have to replace a chain necessarily when it gets old. You simply rework, reweld the ends of your hammers. That's what we're going to be doing this week is putting the hammers on 
And when we come back, I'll show you how all this fits together. We'll fire it up again with the hammers on, and you'll see what it's like. Now, you're getting enough information here where you can build your own impact or flail mill. You can, like I said, use chain or hammers like we're doing. I like the hammer design. I think it's better. And as you go along, as you follow the series, you'll see step by step what you can put together in your own shop to make your own sample cart. The idea is you've got to get out there and sample. As you sample, you get on the gold. So build your own cart. You can duplicate our uh, flail mill designs if you want. I don't care. But you have to go with basically three sections. Your mill, your gold and mineral separation stage, and then your final ca capture stage. And you can put anything in here you want. You don't have to go with a gold turban. This is representative of a gold turban. You can put, say, a, a gold hog or a cane or a, a royal sluice in there. You could put a small sluice in there on a high angle. And then a sluice under that that you dump into with the lower angle. So you're capturing all your gold. So that's basically the direction we're going in. And if you want to get a new career, you want to get on the gold, this is a way to start out. You may have to spend a few months, maybe up to a year, just doing your prospecting so you know where the gold's at. That's what we're going to do. So if you got a crappy job and it's really getting old, build yourself a prospecting cart and you'll get on the gold. So until then, my name is not Jeff, I'm not Roger from Oz, I'm Ken Riley from Copperland, and we'll see you in Arizona getting the gold. Until then, take care.